Value-based care is a hot topic, but is it all it's cracked up to be? Dr. Jubal, MedSchoolInsiders.com When we explained how RVUs worked in a previous video, many of you requested we make a video on value-based versus fee-for-service care. As a pre-med or medical student, you must be familiar with these terms as the debate between these two payment models will determine the future of the American healthcare system. So, what is value-based care, and what are the key differences between these healthcare payment systems? Stick around until the end when we discuss if it's possible for the US to switch to a value-based system. In the United States, there are two healthcare payment systems, value-based care and fee-for-service care. And they are polar opposites of each other. Let's start with fee-for-service care. It's the old-school, traditional model of healthcare payments founded during the American Great Depression. Put simply, fee-for-service care means payments are based directly on the amount of services a patient receives, regardless of the quality of those services. The model heavily rewards patient volume, as physicians are allowed to bill the patient's insurance for every office visit, lab test, or procedure they perform. While more common among private practices, some hospitals still use fee-for-service care. The model encourages physicians to see as many patients as possible, as the more patients they see, the more money they make. On the plus side, if physicians are financially motivated to see as many patients as possible, there will be shorter wait times. In a country with a growing physician shortage, especially in primary care positions, encouraging physicians to see as many patients as possible could theoretically help keep the public healthy. However, critics of this healthcare model often argue that fee-for-service care unethically incentivizes physicians to focus on quantity over quality. Another common critique is that fraud is more likely to occur as there is a financial motive to perform as many tests and procedures as possible, even if those tests are medically unnecessary. We covered the fee-for-service payment system in more detail in our RVUs video, link in the description. Compared to value-based care, fee-for-service is a remarkably simple model. So what is value-based care? Since the 1960s, there has been a movement to focus on the quality of medical care and achieve better health outcomes without unnecessary cost to the hospital or the patient. This paved the way for value-based care. The model works like this. Instead of reimbursing physicians for each individual service they render, value-based care ties reimbursement to the quality and effectiveness of the care provided. Now, how hospitals and Medicaid determine the quality and effectiveness of care is where this payment model gets tricky. Most often, something called patient quality measures are used. There are countless measures hospitals can use to objectively determine the quality of their care. For example, let's consider chronic kidney disease or CKD. The hospital could assess quality by looking at the number of CKD patients on dialysis, how long CKD patients are on dialysis, the percent of dialysis patients who eventually receive a kidney transplant, or how long the patient's kidney transplant survives. The possible quality measurements are limitless, and these quality measurements are often combined to assess overall patient outcomes. Because quality measurements are extremely difficult to weigh together and can take years to collect accurately, many hospitals have come up with creative ways to ensure they are paid for their services closer to real time. Two common methods are capitation reimbursements and bundled payments. Capitation reimbursements are when patients pay a fixed amount of money in advance every month, regardless of how many services they use. For example, a patient could sign a contract saying they will pay $300 per month for access to the physician, regardless of whether they get $300 worth of care back. Of course, this also means if the patient uses more than $300 worth of services that month, they are not charged for the extra amount. If this sounds like insurance to you, well, that's because it basically is. Bundled payments are when a patient pays for a large number of visits and services they received in one lump sum. The classic example of this method is when a woman is pregnant. During pregnancy, many fetal checkup appointments are required. The mother may need to start taking medications to promote better embryological development, and, of course, they need to deliver the baby after 9 long months. After the baby is born, the mother will receive a lump sum bill for all of the services they used while they were pregnant. Because the hospital is able to bundle these many costs together, they sometimes provide discounts to patients. 
And since the fetus's prenatal care costs are bundled, the hospital is inherently motivated to ensure the mother is as healthy as possible to help minimize the chances of complex births. The hospital does this so it can save money while providing the same high-value care. Value-based care is much more complex than fee-for-service care, but it does have a few strengths that fee-for-service care does not. For instance, value-based care excels at reducing unnecessary services provided, creates physician accountability to ensure patient satisfaction, and incentivizes preventive health care. That said, value-based care is difficult to implement as patient outcomes can be tough to measure accurately and it comes with a more stressful, error-prone billing process. But the biggest criticism of value-based care is that rural and smaller hospital systems will naturally have worse outcomes as they lack the resources necessary to meet national patient outcome benchmarks. If they can't meet those standards, they receive less federal funding, making it even more challenging for them to reach patient outcome goals. If implemented inappropriately, value-based care could lead to a vicious cycle of the top hospital systems receiving the lion's share of federal funding and smaller programs not receiving the resources they need to offer high-value care. So let's review and compare the differences between these two payment models side by side since this is an understandably complicated topic. First, the payment model. Fee-for-service means providers are paid for each service rendered regardless of outcome or quality. Value-based care means providers are reimbursed based on the quality and effectiveness of care provided, with incentives tied to patient outcomes. Second, how do these models influence physician behavior? Fee-for-service care may incentivize unnecessary tests, procedures, or treatments. Value-based care encourages providers to prioritize preventive care, chronic disease management, and patient engagement. However, there's potential for value-based care to incentivize physicians to cherry-pick healthier patients and neglect more complex cases. Third, how do the models influence cost control? Fee-for-service care can lead to higher healthcare costs due to overutilization. Value-based care aims to control costs by improving efficiency and focusing on preventive care. However, shifting from fee-for-service to value-based care requires a significant overhaul which is both challenging and costly. An incredible amount of data, along with the technology to analyze this data, is required to accurately and effectively measure the value of care. It's a huge investment that many hospitals do not have the extra resources for. And lastly, what's the long-term impact of both payment models? Fee-for-service care may contribute to unsustainable healthcare spending and variable quality of care. Value-based care is intended to improve overall population health and reduce healthcare spending in the long term by emphasizing prevention and value. So could the US transition to a value-based care system? This is the million-dollar question on every physician and hospital administrator's mind. However, the trend is clear. While value-based care is an exceptionally complicated process, it can be equally as profitable as fee-for-service care and is better for patients. There is a strong national push to reduce healthcare spending by stopping unnecessary tests and procedures from being performed. Looking to the future, the United States healthcare system is slowly replacing its traditional fee-for-service care model with value-based care. These healthcare payment decisions will greatly impact everyone regardless if you are the one providing care or receiving it. If you want to know more about how these changes are being implemented, there are dozens of national organizations focused on creating this change. The best example is Choosing Wisely, an international organization that has helped pass legislation to encourage more and more hospitals to switch to value-based care models, linked in the description. No matter the type of medical practice you end up pursuing, research will play a huge role in getting you there. Elevating your research skills and building your list of publications will open doors for you, period. And not having adequate research experience will propel other students ahead of you. The Med School Insider's Ultimate Research Course has over 75 video modules that distilled the tactics and lessons our three physician course creators, myself included, learned from earning more than 60 publications and abstracts each. And it's this very research that consistently wowed admissions committees both for medical school and residency. Whether you're applying to medical school or residency, we're confident you will find tremendous value. Access the ultimate pre-med and medical student research course in the description. For the next 30 days, use coupon code VALUE20 for 20% off the course.